Hello my fellow miner, today we are going to have a look at the open network, more specifically the Torn coin. Torn itself is proof of stake, while Torn coin is proof of work. That of course means that we can mine it with our GPU. Why would we do such a thing? Well, it's quite easy with our LHR graphic cards, we can actually mine Torn coin and yeah, earn more than mining Ethereum. Torn was originally made by the Telegram team, um, but then the US Securities and Exchange Commission got really angry at them for apparently no reason and came after them. I'll tell a very short story here about how it worked out. The guy is the Telegram team and the female is SEC. What? But you want to create smart, a you know, digital a token Telegram, that can be used uh, on Telegram called Gram? You can pay Gram? money what? over Are Telegram, you, you can transfer what? them. No, it is no, cheap, it is no, fast. can't do can't that. No, no, you owe us money now. It's very smart, you just no, use your can't phone. Do it. No, there's no harm there. Are you crazy? Yeah. You use no, the phone, you send money, I swear to God, you owe us now 18 million dollars. 18 yeah, okay. million dollars. But you don't understand, let me show you again. 18 million dollars? See, I'm not going to talk anymore. It's okay, it's okay. That was the short version of it, very dramatic. If you want the full version, go read it on the Taunt page, I'll drop a link in the description. In the description, you'll also find a very short tutorial of how to set it up, so which wallet you should install and which pool you should point at. Lucky for us, it's open source now and LotMiner is going to support it in version 1.39, which should be released today. As far as I understand, LotMiner is only waiting for HiveOS to support LotMiner with the Torn coin. As you can see here, the fee will be 1.5%. The pool in the description has 0% fee, but there is a transaction fee. If you have watched my card introduction, you can skip the next part over to the overclock settings. Quickly moving on like a ninja, uh, we're going to have a look at the RTX 3060 LHR version 2 from Sotag Gaming. It has been working perfectly in very good quality to be honest. The RTX 3060 Ti from Asus, their Tough series. No, that is actually the wrong picture. There. Now we have the right one. The graphic card comes with two balls of steel in each fan. Military grade. Yes, yes. A piano was dropped on my head as a kid, so I am legally excused. Then we have the RTX 3070. I chill 4x from Eno 3D. It's actually surprisingly good. The quality is top notch. I have not changed anything. It's super cool actually. And then of course it comes with lots of RGBs that you cannot turn off via the software because the software part sucks. But it doesn't matter because more RGBs, more mega hash. Up next we have the RTX 3070 Ti from Sotag Gaming, also known as the DIY 3070 Ti because it drops thermal padding and comes with screws that have fallen out. I actually expected the quality to be uh, on pair with their RTX 3060, oh boy was I wrong, what a pile of poop. And then we have the RTX 3080 LHR from Gigabyte Vision Overclock Revision 2. It's actually quite good looking, but I wish you could get it in black brushed metal instead. Even though it doesn't really matter because it's part of my mining rig and I never see it. And now it's time for the last card, the RTX 3080 Ti from Eno 3D iChill X4. Yes, I'm very well aware that it looks exactly like the RTX 3070 edition, um, it is. Actually, the pictures are also exactly the same, so I had to take the one with the box. I said their graphic card is good quality, not their software and definitely not their homepage. That is a very good example of what happens when you take a back-end software developer and put him or her to make a homepage. If you haven't subscribed, Uncle Donkey would very much like you to hit subscribe and afterwards that bell notification. Yes, the bell so you can get spammed even while you sit on the toilet. I mean, who doesn't want to get a random notification at random times around the clock? It is very nice. So, remember to hit the bell notification and you will get unwanted messages all the time. It's time to have a look at the overclock settings for the RTX 3060 LHR version 2. I set the core clock to 200 and the memory clock to minus 2000 and the power limit to 100. I suggest you use these overclock settings as a base and then adjust on the power limit until you get the result you want. 
Now let's have a look at the overclock settings for the RTX 3060 Ti Mining Torn Coin. I set the core clock to 200 and the memory clock to minus 2000 and the power limit to 110. You can use the power limit and adjust it to hone in on the result you wish for. Now let's have a look at the overclock settings for the RTX 3070 Mining Torn Coin. I set the core clock to 200 and the memory clock to minus 2000 and the power limit to 130. Use the power limit to hone in on the result you wish for. Let's have a look at the RTX 3070 Ti's overclock settings for mining Torn Coin. I set the core clock to 200, the memory clock to minus 2000 and the power limit to 200. I adjust the power limit up or down to tweak the result more to your liking. Let's have a look at the overclock settings for the RTX 3080 mining Torn Coin. I set the core clock to 250 and the memory clock to minus 2000 and the power limit to 230. Adjust the power limit to tweak the results more to your liking. Let's have a look at the final card. The overclock settings for the RTX 3080 Ti mining Torn Coin. I set the core clock to 250, the memory clock to minus 2000 and the power limit to 260. Use the power limit to adjust the results more to your liking. It's finally time to have a look at the average results for all the cards. Let's have a look at the average results for the RTX 3060. 1670.7 megahertz per second at 99 watts, which gives an efficiency of 16.876. Those are some big numbers compared to what we are used to with Ethereum. Anyway, let's move on and have a look at the average results for the RTX 3060 Ti. 2068.7 MHz per second at 109 watts, which gives an efficiency of 18.979. Now let's have a look at the average reported result for the RTX 3070. 2607 MHz per second at 129 watts, which gives an efficiency of 20.209. Moving on quickly, let's look at the average reported results for the RTX 3070 Ti. 2,961.3 MHz per second at 199 watts, which gives an efficiency of 14.881. Even here, the RTX 3070 Ti is the least efficient of them all. And trust me, I have really tried my very best. Let's move on and have a look at the average reported results for the RTX 3080. 3,930. 0.1 megahertz per second at 229 watts, which gives an efficiency of 17.162. And now for the final card, the RTX 3080 Ti. 4635.4 megahertz per second at 259 watts, which gives an efficiency of 17.897. You can get better hash rates on all the cards actually by just adjusting the power level upwards. I chose these settings as they fit my need best. I will call them balanced overclock settings as they are not the most efficient and they are not the highest hash rate either. You see there's a lot of empty space here and that is in case that you are actually interested in seeing more then drop a comment that you want to see more and I will test one of the two other miners that exist. Having a quick look at Taunt Pool, which is not the pool I would recommend to use, I'll write it in the description. Uh, we can see that per giga hash in the last 24 hours, you would expect to get 0 0.4801 ton, and that is minus the fees. So if we take that and apply it to our hash rates, then we'll get how much Torn coin we can expect per card per day. For the 3060, it is 0.8. For the 3060 Ti, it is 0.99. The 3070 is 1.25, the 3070 Ti 1.42, the 3080 1.89, for the 3080 Ti 2.22. I'll add the revenue based on a setting price of $3.8. And the kilowatt hour price at $0.1. And this is the end result. Expected profits would be for the 3060 $2.8, for the 3060 Ti $3.5, for the 3070, $4.44, for the 3070 Ti, $4.92, for the 3080, $6.63, for the 3080 Ti, $7.82 per day in profit. So that is actually quite a lot. Of course, as this coin is completely new and has only been live for about two or three months, then there's a very good chance it will do the exact same as Ergo. 
Let me illustrate. This is a very normal picture of new cryptocurrencies uh, joining the market where they start, they go up really crazy actually and then they go down and many actually never go up again. They semi move one time and then they go to the trash can forever. Just keep that in mind when you start mining this, if you start mining this, it may also be very well that it goes the same way as Bitcoin and all of a sudden you're a billionaire and you'll buy a small island. Maybe you decide to hold, maybe you decide to sell, that is completely up to you. Me personally, I will hold them. And if they one day become completely worthless, I'll just blame the wife for stressing me. If you have an idea of other cryptocurrencies that may be of interest, please drop them in the comments. And also, if you like the video, click like on it. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. And this is my final video of the year. I don't think it's possible to make one more. So, see you next year. Thank you for this year. Before I end my last video of the year, I would very much like to thank all my subscribers. I will hit 8,000 today. That is completely amazing and a lot more than I expected I would ever get. Thank you all and Happy New Year.